It's well, it's hair. like 1950s all over again, which is where they kind of want to go to. You know, the 1950s were an it idyllic was, time of, of alcoholism and secret child abuse. And <laughs> <laughs> we want to go back to that. It was, it was, and it that's, was we never, banned books back then. Never better in the past, I don't think. Leave your moral compass at the door. It's time for Carl and Mike. Welcome to Carl and Mike. Hey. Yes, we should probably give transparency to this. So, to our listeners, all seven of them. Yeah. Um, so what we're doing here is we're just recording a bunch of shows to upload to iTunes and... So we really don't know what episode this is. It could be two. It could be four. It could never make the light of day. That green tea is kind of good, actually. Do you like it? it? Tastes like piss water to me. Piss water? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like piss water. Oh well, we tried something different, Carl. <laughs> we failed. Should have stuck with the standby. No, we didn't fail. They we did. succeeded That's in right. trying something different. The tea failed. Green tea needs something to go with it. Really. Yeah. It doesn't have any flavor, really. No. It needs like. I'm sure it has, an, it has quarter antioxidant. Quarter of sugar. Yeah, that would, have, that would make it much better. <laughs> Texas green tea. And some sort of flavoring, yes. Yeah. Oh, God. So how are you this fine morning? Pissed off at the book. The yeah, book so tell me about this book again. thing. Well, I read I can't believe we have book censorship here in 2014. It is 2014. Isn't what are they, who is censoring and what are they censoring? Well, it's some of our uh, local people, The uh, what we like, we, we'll refer to as... WOC, west of Central. That's the rich folks. The, the rich folks of Highland Park. It's a, it, for y'all that don't know, it's a, uh, not a gated, but it's certainly a uh, separate community from the rest of the city. And it's got its own little protected uh, school district. And there are a number of the police people force. That, they have their oh, own police, police force. force. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Their own government, really. Don't fuck with their police force. And if you don't look like you belong don't drive through there just save yourself the aggravation anyway uh so a number of their citizens have gotten together and decided that they're going to ban books except we're not calling them banning because that would be that would be controversial we're just going to suspend the use of their books these books it's i I think suspended indefinitely yeah here's the thing that's interesting they've been uh uh, designated as uh, books to be read in the high school level. Now, I don't know what grade it is in the high school level, but it's in the high school level. They've said that uh, these are the books we're going to, uh, some of the, uh, that it's going to be on the reading list, required reading list for this English class. And so some parents got together and decided that they didn't like some of the passages and things that were uh, involved so like in what them. Book? So that, what, what kind of, of books are we talking about? They say? Well, they're more popular kind of books. You know, they're not the classics, at least, although these parents want the classics taught, you know, the ones that they feel like have, have been accepted. You know, the ones that, it, what, what is it, uh, the one where he, you know, humps his mom, you know, the old Greek. It's a, it's a Greek book? Yeah, I remember it's, well, of course it's a Greek book. He humps his mom. You know, it sleeps, it was the Iliad and the Odyssey or oh, something yeah. like that. You know, those are okay. And the other ones that, that, that Talk about the evidently the old some of those older classics. Uh, Jacqueline Floyd talked about it this morning uh, uh, in her newspaper article. Some of those old classics have the exact same themes, but these these other books are more newer books, and because they have it, you know, they talk about child abuse or homosexuality or or rape or something like that. We can't have that. Now, the thing that's interesting is they don't want they want to ban from the the classes has required reading, yet they're still going to be in the libraries. Hmm. Yeah. So what, like, do you so know, it's do okay if you men- check mention it, a title ch- of the book? Well, yeah, and I don't have that with me. It's, you know. Check our Facebook page. Uh, yeah, we'll go to the Facebook page and give you a list of all those. I've already branded on the Facebook page about this. And it just it's just unbelievable that these people seem to, that this is what they don't want for their children. And because... It's going to be bad. They feel like it's going to be bad for their children. It's going to be bad for everybody's child. Yeah. Well, yeah, banning just, books is just insane. Yeah. It's like ban, let's ban thought. 
Yeah. Well, that's it. well, yeah, or at least control the thought. Right. And that's the thing about a lot of these bubble communities and stuff. Is there that way? This is the way it is. Well, it also happens to be kind of the one percent world over there. Uh, or maybe it may get dipped down into the five percent world, but that's kind of the world that they're in. Yeah. Which is a whole other thing altogether, you know. Um, so I don't know. Just it seems like we'd probably grown beyond that kind I'm of surprised, like, like we're still are we still fighting the battles over length well, of hair? Well, it's like 1950s all over again, which is where they kind of want to go to. Well, yeah, because so that if they want to go to the 1950s, which is the conservative mindset is always it was better in the past, and you know the 1950s were an idyllic was, time of of alcoholism and secret child abuse, and. <laughs> We want to go back to that. It was, it was, and that's, it was we never, banned books back then. Never better in the past, I don't think. I don't was think it better so. in the past? No, I mean, no. I don't think it was better in the past. I think there were things that were uh, hidden. Um, but no, I think I think society moves forward. Kind of like the crazy ant in the basement? Yeah. You, you hide, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Um, I mean, our health is better. Our life expectancy is better. People have the world open to them on the internet. Yeah. You know, oh, that's another. Group. Really, any individual can go, regardless of education level, and really self educate. Yeah. Or you could just stay on Facebook all day. Yeah. Well, you and have that option. Is you that have a, options. Is that a safe self educate? Well, not no, not now. Really. It, really. Well, it depends on the quality of your friends, I guess, <laughs> in the news feed. Yeah. Um, but. No, I think society, uh, I think every generation thinks it was better. It's kind of like we talked last, when we talked about the music, you know, it imprints at a certain age. I think mm-hmm. your childhood always seems better at a certain age um, in the past. Mm-hmm. I think there's it's part of the genetic or brain makeup of people. But I don't think ultimately it is. I think we're better. You know, all the trends, trend lines point to everything being better. Murders are down. Crime is down. Um, even with all the wars, I mean, we, it's kind of an interesting... Teen pregnancy is down. I read that yesterday. That, 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 uh, because women are putting off having babies, period, until they're much older. Right. And a lot of that has to do with contraception or right. women's right and rights more women working in the in the, so so all that's down but you know that didn't and that used to be big hot button issues for these people they would scream and yell rant and rave look at all this right. Right. children are having sex and babies and I mean, just and even um, <clears throat> I know this with Ferguson and the cop and a lot of cop shootings and stuff it seems like on the matters of race that things are not better but I think they are better oh, I mean, yeah. back in the 50s uh you can even, yeah. you know, be in certain buildings. I mean, so things are better, and we also sometimes I think people can think it seems worse because we have a we have TV and we have people with cameras, and so you can see more of the world than you know got reported on the three TV stations and the one newspaper. You yeah, read. you don't you don't you don't hear uh, uh, the black community screaming to be able to go back the way it was. No. Or, or Native American Indians? Yeah, probably uh, not. Well, I don't know. No. It might they, be the... No. No. Well, they may, yeah. Uh, um, but uh, I'd say there, there's something about a religious strain that makes you want to go back. Right. I don't know what it is. Even the... Uh, I mean, could you say the same thing with the Hasidic Jews? They want to live... Well, yeah, look at the... Uh, Isis wants to yeah. really go back. Yeah, the they want to go back to the yeah. 7th century. They can go back to the you know, um, evangelicals just want to go back to 1950. So oh, so they don't want to go back. It's, quite it's as really far. the further you go, want to go back as a religion, the worse you get. If the That's Catholics true. wanted to go back to the 1500s, oh, to the Inquisition, yeah, oh, that would, that be, would good, be That man. would be bad. Hot pokers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, we'd be we'd be uh, we'd be fighting them in the Vatican right now. Wow. So. Torture chambers. Any any group that wants to go back, the further back they want to go, the worse they are. It is true. That's my theory. I like that theory. Let's work with that for a while and see yeah. what happens. Yeah, think about it. Yeah. Especially on religion. Jesus. Uh-huh. And, and and look at the new, even the New Testament and Old Testament. Yeah. I think the when it comes to religion, people that tend to focus on the Old Testament 
tend to be more messed up than people that focus on the New Testament. Well, it probably in varies their thinking, on their interpretation in their, in their of those values. intolerance, in their, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, further back you go, the more intolerant you get. Yeah. Of others and of, you know, more structured you get in terms of what you're going to wear, well, the, how you're going to eat. The problem I have is that a lot of times these people, they decide that this is what's best for them and their family. And that's all well and good. Knock yourself yeah. out. But then what they want to do is impose that through uh, censorship or, you know, suspending books. Love that word. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And control, and that way control what other people. I mean, they have the option, according to this article, of having their little darlings not read that book and have and read an optional book. But that's not good enough. All right. They want not to, gonna, they're going to spend that book for everybody in the they classroom. They want to spend the book for everybody right, in the including classroom. Including the so, people yeah. who are secular, or people who are Jewish, or people it, who are it, whatever. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, 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 yeah. or people that's where you cross more, the line. Yeah, so when you decide are open with their kids, right. which we've discussed. You know, it just... When you start to dictate what's better for mm-hmm. other people, mm-hmm. then, you know... You run into problems with me. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah. And I think more and more uh, people are trending towards that, our way of thinking on that. I think there's less and less challenge for people to try to tell other people what to do. Again, thought leadership. Once again, <laughs> but this is episode two, and we don't talk about thought leadership till episode three. Oh, so okay. Well, know stay, what tuned. About. stay tuned for uh, thought leadership. <laughs> do you want to get to episode three? The fine level of thought leadership that's exhibited there. Make sure you keep following to read about that. Yes. Have you been watching uh, John Oliver's? Oh, I did see that. The American Beauty. The The American Beauty. Every week he takes on somebody. Yeah. He is really. Well, you know that one. That one was an interesting one because it it, uh, and it's on the website and it takes about fifteen minutes. But watch, you'll never think about beauty contests the same again. And it has nothing to do with beauty. It has everything to do with their whole reason yeah for, and, for being. and this is considered the good one Mer- Miss America yeah as opposed to Miss yeah. USA USA and, and they said that they supply what was it 45 million yeah I love that they were the number one supplier of scholarships to women for women there's right. something like 45 million I think is what they was say it 45 45 or 4.5 I don't know yeah I get my and how they grease the numbers yeah. yeah and no I think it was like 45 million but what they do what John Oliver John Oliver just went really it seems high let's yeah it seems high let's test that and and uh, looking at everybody's uh, tax returns and following the uh, follow the money follow the money or in this case lack thereof found out it was nowhere close to that yeah and how they came to that number was really yeah. sleazy yeah uh, I'm glad he's shined a light you know the to me, <clears throat> I see him and really um, his show and Stewart. I mean, his show, what different from Stewart is he kind of takes a topic and really drills down. Yeah. You know, and so, that's good. Yeah. And you don't even see that anymore, really, uh-uh. in news. Uh-uh. I think it's a real indictment on journalism. Well, that's one of the things that I was, that I was thinking when I was reading it. I'm going, how did they exist? How have they existed for this long without somebody fact-checking that? Just Because we have no journalism. We have no, well, we have journalism, but it's more, it's, it's, what is it? It's what entertainment. Is, it's news it is entertainment. But it's got you, too. You know, it's one of those kind of things. You know, and they keep playing. You, you watch this. I watched this this last week. They use a word. They'll take a word, you know, Wolf Blitzer or somebody will right. take a word that somebody says, whether it's a, 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 a general or Obama or a congressman or whatever, and they'll go, well, now, what do you mean by that word? And then really kind of nail them back in the corner. Now they are, you know, there is that uh, suspended versus uh, band kind of play with words. But what they're doing is they're turning that into a whole thing. That's their whole bit because they got nothing else. So they'll go with that bit of change, you know, trying to, you know, trying to push them into a corner. Right. It's like with Biden's thing where he used the word Shylark. Shylock. Shylock. Shylock, yeah. I never even heard and, that word before. Well, I, I'd heard it, but I didn't associate it the way 
the media then associated it. So all of a sudden he has to backpedal and say, no, no, that's not what I mean. So, so this is gotcha you know, on a word. This is it's not gotcha, journalism. It's gotcha on a word, yes. And so there's that kind of stuff that's going on. And I think a lot of that has contributed to people not trusting uh, their the government media. leaders or, oh, or the media. Yeah. Yeah. Both. yeah, and both. I think both. And I think so, media's yeah. uh, ratings are <laughs> as low as... Don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting we trust <laughs> the political leaders. Um, but... Uh, well, here's the thing I think. You know, I saw 60 Minutes had their season premiere, so they did a piece on ISIS, and... Uh, it was good. I mean, they gave uh-huh. a real, real explanation of it. And I'm thinking, you know, here's CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. They got 24 freaking hours a day, okay? Uh-huh. We can't get 15 minute di- dive deep on a subject. Yeah, you take know, we gotta, one of those 24 hours and we go got, deep on right. something. We got to do these Wolf Blitzer, <laughs> you know, jump here, there, and here, and there kind of yeah. stuff. Breaking let's, news. Let's get, let's get some reporting. Yeah. yeah. I understand that it costs money. Yeah. But that's what your TV commercials are for. I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm just really disappointed in news. I mean, really, <clears throat> most of my news I'm getting yeah. now is from John Stewart. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. stuff like that because it's the only one that actually looks <clears throat> at a situation. I mean, I can't believe that someone hasn't copied it. Yeah. Him. Yeah. I'm surprised CNN hasn't copied it. Uh, and well, he hammers them enough. Yeah. He hammers them enough. You know, and or somebody. think that somebody would. Would wake yeah. up on that. I don't know. It, it, it does seem odd that I hadn't thought about that. 24 hours they've got. Okay, all day. So take one hour and, and do it at 2 a.m., but at least say that you did it and, and repeat it during the day. I mean, who the hell is watching it at 2 yeah. a.m. anyway? Yeah. Um, As opposed to this uh, superficial, shallow mm-hmm. reporting. But it, it's coming on all the, you know, the three main channels. Right. MSNBC, C, uh, CNN, and uh, Fox, which I uh, <laughs> I hate watching, but I do go in and watch it because I want to see what my mom's listening to. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you know. I have to say I haven't been watching Fox much. I yeah. haven't watched really any of the news lately. <laughs> um, well, I'm I'm tapering, I'm tapering off, but I've got to get something in from somewhere. You know, right. I want to. I want to try and get some of it. So I'm. I'm reading uh, Guardian, BBC, uh, Al Jazeera, yeah. English, which I have I'm to sure say, is gonna freak some my people iPad out. is my yeah. iPad is beating my TV now. Yes, I've noticed that yes. more and more. Yes, I use the TV almost for background, and maybe it'll catch my attention. But even on um, Stewart or watching mm-hmm. something, you know, that I want to watch. Uh, well, the same, it, it, I find the, myself drifting to the iPad. Yeah, well, in the same period of time as you're watching TV, you can you can uh, get a lot. I found I've been able to get a lot more viewpoints looking at something in different angles yeah. than I can online. I mean, one of the things that I, I enjoy doing, on, well, enjoy is not the right word, but I use TV for it is is on the hour, especially the major hours, flipping back and forth between the three and finding out what it is that they're talking about. Okay, what's so important that you're putting at the top of the list, at the top of the heap? Right. And they're not always the same. It's yeah. not always the same at all. You know, you there's th- the, the Benghazi thing that we still got to worry about, you know, <laughs> that Fox News keeps running. And and Gazi, so, yeah. Well, yeah, Jesus. but anyway, it's that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah I think you're right. I'm, the the pads, pads winning. Could you imagine what would have happened if Al Gore would have been president at 9/11? Mm-hmm. The right wing noise machine and Fox News would have. Mm-hmm. I would have called for the impeachment of him. Yeah. Don't you oh, think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd be unbelievable. You know, it's it's like I. I find that they are patriotic when their person's in power. And yeah. If their person's not in power, <clears throat> yeah. they no. are not patriotic no, at all. No, they're not. They're they don't they're, care. They don't yeah. And they'll scream bloody murder if, when Bush was being, quote-unquote, disrespected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's such a two-faced kind of existence. There. Well, I think a lot of people see that now. There are people that are not going to see it, that are right in the middle of it, that are believers of it, that are that are drunk of the Kool-Aid. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to change them, and that's fine. They're, they're not going to. They're you don't even try. It's right. not not worth the effort. Uh, yeah, I think 
pad seems to be working, which is really weird, you know, because it's like, it, well, it's pad, and I get to read the newspaper in Dallas Morning News every day, which is an okay paper, but I'm finding you out. You actually get the paper delivered? I actually get wow. the hard paper. I like sitting down, I like having the paper crinkle, yeah, you yeah, know, working yeah. out the fold so it's flat, that whole bullshit. That it's a process that I like doing. But I found that a lot of the articles that I'm reading. You already uh, read on the iPad? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's news feeds out of uh, New York Times or various other things in, that were posted the day before, the night before. Um, so a lot of that's a rehash, and the other stuff is just local crap. Like I don't care about the bake sale at you know the local high school or. <laughs> Or, they have or that the, in the or, Oh yeah, is? and then yeah, or the mur- murder or whatever. Even the thing on the back that shows weather. I don't look at that anymore because I've got an app. Yeah. That'll tell me exactly what the weather is going to be and when it's going to change and what the you know I just why bother? So I don't know how much longer I'll be taking the paper. And then same thing with Time Magazine. I'm gonna I'll stop that next time. And this will be the first time I've. I, I stopped have, Newsweek. Well, Newsweek kind of stopped me. I mean, I've had that magazine. Uh, since I was in in uh, forty years, forty plus years, you I had time a subscription yes. of time. Yes, You're letting and it run I'll, out. I'll let it run out because yeah. it just there's not enough there. There, right? You know, and what little stuff that I get out of there that I can't get other place, I just change my mix on Flipboard to put in more feeds from other things, and I just do that. Right. But you know, there's all kinds of things like that that are kind of pissing out. The one of the things that bum me out today in the paper was that CD source is closing its doors after I think 20 plus years and it's down on uh, Greenville did you ever go there CD source to buy CDs it's yeah. used CDs <clears throat> and it used to be across the street from Sound Warehouse which was, right. before it was Sound Warehouse was Peaches and then there was a Pagan Rhythms and there was one or two other places all right down there so you could go there and, and now that place is going to be closed and it's like where the fuck do you go for music, yeah, but you know, I, I have iTunes. to say, I have to. Well, I, I know, and, and Spotify. Even with that, I haven't, I haven't gone down there in a couple of years to buy oh, anything. So there you are. Yeah. No. But the idea that it's going to be gone and not available anymore. I mean, it's getting harder and harder to find that kind of an eclectic mix of. You see, I don't UCs. think it's going to be hard to find. You're going to be able to find it online. There'll be somebody that focuses on that niche. Well, probably. Uh, and but you know honestly I haven't bought that much music online. Oh yeah, the whole music world's changed. <clears throat> yeah, right? and so uh, I don't know. Like we talked about, it's kind of a utility. <clears throat> yeah, becoming like that. Pay ten bucks a month, you get music. Mm-hmm. Pay, you know, hundred bucks to get electricity. And pay they're trying to figure out to get way, They're trying to figure out a way for bands to make music again. And that's I mean money out of it, and that's what YouTube. You know, a YouTube. Uh, the band had their release of this new album coinciding with Apple right. and their release of these. And I don't understand how giving away the album is going to increase. Well, increase. They had $2 it million incre- in sales of their back catalog. Well, it, yes, it did for them. So it exposed so that, them. Oh, yeah, so it did quite a bit. Right, but a, a young band, yeah. new band, isn't going, well, they're just not, I don't know the business, how the business model is going to come out of that. Nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows. Really and, and, and if that happened, it, to to uh, on the newspaper front, I, I, I'm a Chicago <clears throat> sports fan. Growing up in Chicago, I'm a Cubs <laughs> fan, a Bears fan, a Bulls fan. So, uh, you know, I got a, an offer by Chicago Tribune for their sports section for the year online, where they would give me not only access because they have paywalls now yeah. on the newspapers, <laughs> right? So they would give me access to all the sports online, mm-hmm. uh, as well as a digital copy. Uh, of their sports section that comes out in the newspaper every, every day, day, you know, for thirty-five bucks for the year. Yeah. So there. Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. Yeah, there you but go. But I'm saying but you can get most of the all that stuff I, for free. You know, if they would have right? done it maybe for nine ninety-nine, I might have done it. Yeah. You know, so there, there's a price model that hasn't been oh, there's some determined <laughs> what the price model is. I'm a subscriber to uh, Andrew Sullivan's blog, The Daily Dish. How much does I that pay, cost? It costs nineteen ninety-nine a year. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, but you know, I go there every day, and uh, and so I read his blog, and, and he's he's yeah. you know he done a he's done a good job of a asking yeah. for subscribers, yeah. b saying hey this is you know we're paying our interns health care, yeah. we uh, 
we, you know, are doing independent but journalism. they're also providing really good content, or you wouldn't consider right. it no. at, at all to begin It's with. a combination, yeah. right? He's created a community. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think he's leading the model. Yeah. Uh, you know, of, See, I will pay. I think people will pay. or, or well, that's Not all. What only 10% of his. What is the price point? 1999, I, I, I think, think for a year long. Yeah. It's a, it, well, a lot of stuff is 1999. Yes. 1999 a month, 1999 well, a, a year, 1999. You know, it's one of those kind of things. You get above that, and people, you know, it, it's one thing to think, well, it's less than 20 bucks, and it's a year, I'll do it. Yeah. You know, but if you start getting more than that, you go, man. So, like Chicago you, Tribune, and I think the New York Times makes this mistake, they're asking too much. Now, mm -hmm. maybe they're going for somebody uh, higher income level, but I mm -hmm. think if. I think if the Chicago Tribune would have done 1999 for the year, I might have mm -hmm. gone for it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and the mindset I and I'm and even Andrew Sullivan, who's a successful model at mm -hmm. this, still only has ten. I don't know, maybe ten percent of his audience, or maybe even less, that have subscribed. And yet, that's created a million well, dollars a year. Does he still work for one of the papers? No, he's independent. Now. Oh, he's independent now. Right? Isn't that what happened to Matt Taibbi too? Didn't he go into? He went to his own. Yeah, a lot he's, of them are now going into their yeah. own company. So he's not working with Rolling Stone anymore. He's working right. with somebody else. So you're getting these seasoned reporters that yeah. are forming their own online businesses. Really. No, well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So how long is it going to be for these seasoned professors before? perform uh, put together their own online university on, yeah or their their online th uh, place where you can download their lectures i mean that, that, i, I it, think is there are is that if i haven't been uh, really done much with itunes university but there's huh. definitely lectures that are being done there and yeah but i mean the the professors going independent of the universities i mean they some some of these people have got their own reputation beyond the university right? yeah <clears throat> i think some of them have some of them have gone to mm -hmm. places like Can Academy, things like that. Uh, I think education is really changing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I uh, subscribed for a little while to uh, Lydia, which is a it's 20 bucks a month, speaking of 1999. I think it's 20 yeah. bucks a month, and you got access to all these online courses. I, I get their emails. What is it? What is so, it? yeah, you can go I in there. So I went in there, for <laughs> instance, years ago uh, and learned how to do PowerPoints, you know, beyond just... Mm -hmm. Yeah. trying to figure it out myself. And, yeah. and so you could take a course on, they had a wealth of courses on all sorts of stuff. So you want to learn Seriously. PowerPress or WordPress or you want to learn PowerPoint or you want to learn Microsoft Word or you want to go in-depth on that, um, you can take that course. You know, and you can take as many courses as you want uh, of the hundreds Lydia. of courses they and have. So it's, it is, so, it's, so it's 19, but do you have to sign up for six months or a year no, or something like that? No, you, you, sign, you get a free month. trial. They give you a free trial. <laughs> for it's a free month? I think it's a month. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, check the Facebook page, but uh, you get a free trial usually for a month, and then you you know it's twenty bucks a month or whatever they're charging. And um, and I stayed with that for about three or four months, and then I realized you know I wasn't. I had gotten a couple of courses, and you got what you needed. I got what step. I wanted, and, and then you know unsubscribed, and maybe I'll go back if I want to learn something. But you had a good experience. They yeah. got 60 bucks out of you, which yeah. they were was, happy about. Right. So, so it was a win-win, I think. Huh. Um, yeah. Now, when you when you say, I want to learn about PowerPoint, do, and you go into it, do they give you a list? No, they have video video modules, you know. And they, but, I mean, do they tell you how in-depth they go on PowerPoint? Yeah. The, oh, they've got it really deep basics, down. I mean, you yeah, know, you can go basic, be, intermediate, advanced. Absolutely. Yeah. So and, you have your choice of. And how to within do that. each module, there may be each level. There may be several modules. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and it'll take you through the path <clears throat> from beginning beginner to get deeper and deeper, and deeper, mm -hmm. depending on where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, and and in just about any, uh, a lot of subjects, uh, usually around, um, you know, some kind of tech internet but not necessarily i mean there's other subjects like illustration design this is kind of like sounding like uh, product this, placement this is an ad folks this is the kind of ads you get but yes right. it's product placement and they're getting it for free so that not only do they get my 60 bucks now they're getting free advertising yeah. here on but Carl you had and a good Mike. experience i did have a good experience if you had a bad experience we'd be talking about it too and then they'd be going damn those yes so lydia wants to send a free subscription too <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but no i think I think it's a great model for the future of education. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I think education, 
man, when uh, this credit card, uh, this privatization of education uh -huh. is one thing, but what's happened with student loan stuff, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and what people are paying to uh -huh. educate, and what students yeah. are going out of yeah. college, what a crazy... Well, see, he's on, I read an article just in the last couple of weeks about the difference between costs of a traditional college, bricks and mortar, mortar place, and online. There's not that much difference. And in fact, some cases, it's more money. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, I'm sorry, that just is not going to cut it. The well, convenience is one thing, but thinking you're going to get, get the same amount of money, I'm saying, no, it should be less. And the fact that we uh, have um, put students into debt to the degree that they're coming out of college with basically a mortgage on their back mm -hmm. is insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Insane. Well, we, I mean, the society. We haven't paid for that yet, but we will pay. Yeah, Yeah. because that's, that's not going to. That's going to. It's un. Attainable. That's an untenable. And it's an unsustainable. Yeah, uh, un thank you. Unsustainable. Yeah, unsustainable. You're going to kill model. a whole generation. Yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's just crazy to me. And then yep. I guess, I guess, which I don't know much about, but these public universities, these for profit universities, which are these the University of Phoenix. Yeah, all that. Uh, their, their graduation rate is pathetic. Yeah, it's way less. Than uh, the and others. they're making big bucks. Well, they don't have. Well, they're 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 guaranteed the money. Right. They're guaranteed the money. So why wouldn't you pop? Yeah. Oh, we could do, you know, Carl and Mike University, and it would be you'd be guaranteed the money. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, and I think partially it's about par parents and students. They're just stuck in this education box. Yes. And the box is, okay, well, you got to go to college, which is a real 1950s model. Okay? You don't anymore. I mean, you Stuck could, go to, you could yeah. go to Khan Academy yeah. and Lydia yeah. and be yeah. paying, let's say you're paying 100 bucks a month yeah. or 200 bucks yeah. a month online yeah. and be getting a first-class education. Yeah. So this idea uh, of, I mean, to me, college, really, mm -hmm. the advantage of college is it's a... It's a uh, training wheels for adulthood. Yeah. In other words, you get away from mom and dad. Yeah. Okay. You go live in the dorm. You live with people your age, and and you're not quite, you know. Yeah. You still got the. They're still making meals for you at the university, and you're and you're meeting other kids that mm -hmm. from other experiences that turn you on, like we talk about right. to music and, and so you stuff. Don't, you don't get that online. No. Kids that don't part get you that don't online. get, and that's worth something. Oh, it's worth a lot. Yeah, it's worth you know. Is it worth being walking out of there with fifty thousand dollar debt on your back? No. No. Mm -hmm. But it is worth uh, something for that social yeah. experience. Well, now the question is, how could you uh, replace that social experience? That well, here's an idea. Lost. Yeah. What if you have coffee shops? Coffee shops. Yeah. Coffee shop uni university. Well, you have beat ups at coffee shops yeah. after you go take the classes. After people take the classes yeah. for further conversation, and so it's and so instead of it, it, you take the class, you read it, you get interested in it. If you want to know more, you go to a meet up someplace where uh, uh, you you can have, sit down and have free conversation about it. It's not like you're having somebody lecture you, but you actually converse. Whoa! Yeah, you could converse. do it that way. And discuss various opinions. What if you created apartment complexes and you kind of set it up like dorms? And so you're yeah. going to give them food. You're going to do their food for them. Mm -hmm. You're going to create, in a sense, the university experience for people that are taking online classes. Yeah. I don't know. So you get yourself out of home. It's kind of the training wheels, again, for mm -hmm. adulthood. Yeah. You're kind of out of home, but you're still cared for to a certain mm -hmm. extent uh, before you're off campus mm -hmm. and on your way as an adult. I don't know if there's a market there, but it'd be for, it'd be for online students or people 18 to 20, whatever. And, you know, you have apartment complexes for 55-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Why can't you have apartment complex for well, no, see, 18 to 22 a, or something? Here's an interesting thing on the Lydia deal. I wonder, they've got these various classes that you can take on various products. Now, let's say, because I'm a graphic designer, that I want to be a graphic designer. Yes, there are so classes. So I can, I, can, I can, so there are classes yes. on how to be a graphic designer. So you can, you can develop your own curriculum, or they can make, do they make suggestions of a curriculum that say you want to be a graphic designer and you want to specialize in print, and if you do, God help you, because that's dead. You want to specialize in gaming. 
right. you say, okay, these are the gaming classes. These are the, this is the gaming software that you need to have. I think so. I, I'm, you know, for this, for us trying to ramp up with this podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm doing the Fizzle. Uh-huh. Fizzle, F-I-Z-Z-L dot co. That Fizzle dot co. That's an education thing. So it's kind of like Lydia? It's kind of like Lydia, only yeah. they're focused on internet marketing. But they have okay. what they call paths. Uh-huh. So there was a path. You choose the path. And so I chose, you know, I want to st- start a podcast because uh-huh. we're learning how uh-huh. to do this uh-huh. podcast, right? So you go on this podcast path and they have, you know, all the classes laid out for you. How much is it? It's 35 a month. 35 a month. Okay. Okay. Ooh, they're really pushing them. Well, I think that I yeah. think the material is excellent. Yeah. So I'm very happy yeah. with Fizzle. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm on this. You know, it's helped me a lot. But if figure you're out intense how to about looking at it and understanding it, you can probably get most of what you need to know in a couple of months, right? I could have done. You get a free month of Fizzle too. Yeah. So I could have done the podcast path in my first month. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I I did a, I did a lot of it in the first yeah. free month. Yeah. You know, I just. But there's also, they have, and I think more and more, they have a community. So there's a forum of people that are in the now same place you are. you have access to this forum, you still have to be paying Mem- $35 a month. You right. have to be a member to right. have access right. to it. Okay, so it's a closed forum for members. Only. Well, no, the first month it's free. Everything yeah. is open yeah. the first month. It's free. Yeah, but after that. After that, okay. yeah. And there's other courses there, right? So if you want to learn Word in Fizzle, if you want to learn WordPress, if you want to learn you know, how to... Uh, how to sell a product online uh-huh. if you want to learn internet marketing uh-huh. Uh-huh. online so their their focus uh-huh. is around internet marketing yeah. podcasting blogging that kind of area now lydia uh-huh. might have might have courses in all that too uh-huh. you know but lydia is a more broad uh-huh. range of topics uh and probably less uh-huh. community focused uh-huh. although i think they have that there so i think this is where education is going i mean and you're right. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to learn how to be, uh, you know, an animator, or you want to learn Photoshop deep, or you're going to learn some skill sets that are going to be able to get you jobs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's crazy. I mean, it's well, crazy see, to be spending as much money as universities well, are charging th- right now. Think, think about the way that, that the university works. You take if you if you're taking 15 hours, you've got some. Uh, one-hour classes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and one right. and a half-hour classes on Tuesday, Thursday, right? That's right. But you're going to class maybe Tuesday, Thursday mornings, and Monday, Wednesday, you'll, you'll have a 7.30, and then maybe some classes in the afternoon. The rest of the time, it's all free time. Right. Right? Which but you're supposed with, to be doing homework Which stuff. you're supposed to be doing homework and stuff like that. But with, with Lydia or this fizzle, fizzle it, it sounds like what you do is you just really get into it and drill down. So to me, it seems like you can get a lot more information in a shorter period of time and become more uh, adept at using that information to achieve what you want to achieve yeah, that way. I think, right? I, you know, I've done the university experience, and, yeah. and I'm doing this now. You know, and I think anyone who stops educating at, after college is crazy in today's yeah. day and age. There's just too much change going on. Yeah. Uh, and I can't, i got to tell you, maybe it's me, but... I mean, first off, let's be some reality. My college experience, if, if a class was before 10 in the morning, I was making it 30% of the time. Yeah. Number one. Shame on you, Carl. Well, that's just was that. Matter of fact, towards my later years in college, I actually worked my schedule so I didn't have a class oh, until yeah. 10 in the morning or later, as uh, some of my friends would attest to. Were you sleeping late or getting up and studying? No, I was sleeping, <laughs> usually because I was up the night before. Yeah. With, uh, you know, playing cards or partaking in uh, recreational activities. (laughs) I'll leave it at that. Well, that could happen. What kind of activities? (laughs) Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And uh, which is, you know, I think that is part of the college experience is socializing away from the parents. I mean, Mm -hmm. there is a development Mm -hmm. there Mm -hmm. that is -hmm. is important. And that part, you're right. Lydia or none of them are going to give you that, Mm -hmm. you know. But I don't know. Things have changed today. I mean, kids like their parents now. <laughs> you know, when I was, and not that I didn't like my parents, but, man, I, when well, I was 18, I was wanting you know, out. I think, I think right? what's interesting about that is, and I hadn't thought about that. So why is that? Because they're not beating them? Well, they're not Sexually beating. abusing them? Yeah, well, well not that there's probably much still of that. some of it. But, but what they're, I think there's a shared uh, 
experience, shared cultural experience that is there that wasn't there in the old days when everything was really great, like in the 50s. Uh, you yeah. know, there's a shared music thing. I know there is with me and, right. and our, our kids. You know, when, when, as they were growing up, I played a game with them uh, when we were driving. Uh, the music, music, something would come on the radio. I said, who is that? And I kept yeah. doing this game with them over and over again right. to where they'd go, oh, that's Dylan or that's uh, right. Streisand or <laughs> or Zeppelin or, or uh, Talking Heads or right, whoever. Right. And they got to the point where they know a full... You know, that's Marvin Gaye, whatever. They know all that. And so I think there's that shared experience, at least in my experience, it, with yes. in our family, there was that. And so I think that that is kind of a common glue or a bonding that happens. I think, I think baby movies boom- are the same way. Yeah. TV is the same way. I think Baby Boomers did a good job on that, though. I think, I think there was some really dysfunctional parenting going on in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 60s were a rebellion, really, a generation's rebellion. Well, were ro- there was role-playing in the 50s. You know, right. mom stays home, she right. does this, she does the cooking, she right. acts a certain way, has right. things ready at a certain time, dad goes to work, he wears, dresses a certain way, right. looks a certain way, acts a certain way, it's got to be the authoritarian authority figure, right. and, you know. But the, think about it, the 60s were, you know, by mid-60s, well, so these are kids, 17, I means back from the 1950s, mm-hmm. early 50s. It was a rebellion against that. I mean, the 60s don't happen if the youth don't rebel against that experience. Yes. Okay? There's no youth rebellion against their parents today, yeah. really, yeah. because it's a much healthier relationship, I think, in general. Yeah. And I think you're right. There's a cultural sharing mm-hmm. music, musically mm-hmm. and creatively. I'm not saying it's perfect or no. anything like that, but... I look at my sister and her kids. Uh, they're very close. They talk once uh-huh. a week now. They're uh-huh. both, yeah. They've, yeah. you know, they're in their twenties now. The kids and oh, they yeah. and they talk, but they talk to their folks once a week. Oh yeah. Uh, and they're close, you know. Oh yeah. No, we 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 do the same thing. I mean, we'll we'll talk to except ours. We got three of them, and we're talking multiple times a week with each right. one of them. And some, you know, uh, Zoe calls Nita every morning when she's when Nita's going to work. And Zoe's yeah. going to work and have a conversation. So it's kind of like have. Did you do that when coffee. you left? No. All right. No. You know, uh, they just no. we just didn't. Well, no, and you would write. And we left. You would write letters. Yeah. Don't call so. And you'd hear, don't call so much because it costs a lot of money. It's yeah. long distance. Yeah, you don't have get to that. pay for the long distance call, and so you get that. So uh, maybe that was part of it, but there was also a you know I want to get out of this situation. There was a, there was a oh, recognition yeah. oh, that. Yeah. That situation wasn't as healthy mm-hmm. as it oh, should yeah. have been. Yeah. And I think this generation... So, talk about things getting better. Mm-hmm. Things getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, with yeah. parents and children. Yeah. Now, yeah, there's examples of the extreme where the parents... I can't believe there's parents going to kids' uh, interviews and stuff like that where helicopter parents kind of go off the deep end mm-hmm. uh, in terms of that. But mm-hmm. uh, overall, I think it's much healthier than it was in the 50s. Well, they're still kind of trying to direct or control the path that their kids yeah. are on, you know, yeah. because they, and I don't know what it is, part part of the path that they try to control are moral paths, yeah. okay? In other words, this is the way we want you to believe and to act and think. Yes. So you go to this church, yes. you do have to play by these rules. There's another path that's more of a financial path. This is what we want you to do. So these are the people you need to go know. This is the school you need to go to. These are the, yeah. the organizations you need to join. You need to be part of the skull and bones at Yale or some horse shit like that so you can following daddy's footsteps well a certain population has that yeah and, they, and they, well yeah. it's the same folks that are trying to suspend ban the books you know a lot of it's not just them but there's a lot of that that's a more of a, I think there's a lot of in, in that area I would say there's a lot of people trying to protect their wealth and I can't blame them you know they get they have a pull together a certain amount of cash and they want to protect that so they're trying to get the kids to maybe help protect that by going in the family business, or you know, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, but, I think there's some of that. Um, but there was with with. The I way, mean, the parents want to. Yeah. Their children have the best in life. Well, and, but, and there is a control, and I think there's a point where you got to let yeah, go of that control. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, and Nina and I talked about this. You know, it used to be because most of us are just a generation or so off the farm, right? 
our parents yeah. grew up on a farm. Um, a so in, in those days, it was just a big deal to have a kid, want number one, finish high school, number two, go to college. Yes. It didn't matter what the college was. The fact that you went to college was the big deal. That was a sign of success, it was of a, raising of right. successful parents. Right. So was, there was a huge expectation on me to go to college. Mm-hmm. And I oh, mean, really? I heard that all. Why is that? Because nobody, nobody oh, in my family one? went to college. Oh, you were the first. My parents didn't go to college. Congratulations. Yeah. That's good. And so it was like, definitely was their big yeah. thing. And I heard yeah. about it, you know, growing yeah. up. College was... Yeah. In my future, yeah. yeah. Well, that was going to be a s- well, and it was it was a big deal because it's like uh, his dad didn't go to college. He was in the military, but he flew for American, yeah, uh, uh, for years, you know, as a pilot. And you couldn't you could do that back then. Her mom was the first one to go to school, and she was a teacher. You know, that was kind of a a thing too, a path, an acceptable path for for girls to go to college. And when she wanted, when Nitty's mother wanted to go to college back then her grand she wanted to be a nurse but her father said no because i don't want you looking at naked bodies you can be a what yes well that's you know that's one of those things again she, i don't want you looking at naked bodies but you can be a teacher so that's what wait, she wait, did wait, 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 stop, stop. you didn't want to look at naked bodies in, in the form of nursing yeah so really? yeah well you're trying to protect their their daughters from you know so we're talking about a, doctor nursing it, it they're wow. na- Carl, they're naked bodies. It, there, there would be that temptation to, you know, want to touch, <laughs> you know. Man, i, I got to so get my anyway, head around yeah, that for but, a second. But, well, yeah, but, you know, the, and the, the thing is, it, it was a very big deal. You know, it, with, with my mom's side of the family, she was the first one that went to college. Yeah. And that was a rub with her brother who didn't. On my dad, he was the first one to go to college, and that was a rub with his sister who didn't. And so that was always a resentment that, well, you think you're better than we are because you went to college. Oh, yeah. yeah, so there were some of the, at least in, in, on, in my family on both sides. So yeah, I went to college. My sister you know, didn't go to college. I mean, she went to a, yeah. a school for a year, kind yeah. of a beauty school or something like that. I don't know if there's any resentment in us. Yeah. Well, I don't, I'm not saying there is in every, but I'm just saying it was it was such a, it was there was such an importance placed on it. But now that's it's not enough to just go to college. You, yeah. It, it's the college you go to. See, but and, I think that's antiquated thinking now. With what's available mm-hmm. on the internet, oh, I so think you're gonna put your kid in a hundred thousand dollar. Well, I that. think I think it will definitely I think it'll definitely be antiquated, but that's the way it's evolved. It went from just going to college being a big deal to go to college, and now then to go what college you go to? Did you go to the University of Texas? Oh, that's not good enough. All right. All right. Is it A and M? No, it's not good enough. Oh, did you go to Penn State? Did you go to Harvard? Did you go to Yale? Yeah. Did you get into Yale with C's because your daddy was in part of Yale? Yeah. Need, that's a I whole think this legacy whole thing. thing needs to change. We're in a yeah. different age. I think that's a, a industrial age a feature, mm-hmm. and we're in the information age. Yeah, and uh, I think the whole mindset around that needs to change. I think uh, entrepreneurism needs mm-hmm. to be looked at a lot more. I know that's still not taught where it needs to be in school, but there's opportunities mm-hmm. there. Uh, yeah, know. but do you want to? Te- if, if you're teaching people to be on- entrepreneurs, you're teaching them de- to. Uh, think on their own and you know corporations don't want people to think on their right, but, they were used to but, they, but, they wanted somebody that had certain level of training that they could yeah. work with yes and corporations uh, are still going to play a big role but I think entrepreneurism plays a big role mm-hmm. there's companies you know the oh, Googles absolutely. and Facebooks were oh absolutely were kids in college or that didn't make or it didn't go through college yeah. usually and most of them didn't if you look yeah. at who graduated yeah. from college yeah. that were entrepreneurs very few yeah um, so I just think this whole, this whole model of go to college, you know, and those, some people blow back and say, Hey, you know, there's, uh, studies that show people have gone to college and mm-hmm. up making more money than people who don't go to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and my answer to that is, you know, see me in five years or 10 yeah. years, because I think with the education you can get on the internet now, it's a different ball game. Yeah. And, uh, so I think if I was a young kid looking at my options I would look real hard you know oh yeah I use an example of um, chiropractor you want to become a chiropractor uh-huh. right okay yeah. so you're going to you're going to leave 
medical chiropractic school with about anywhere from 125000 to $250,000 in debt. Yeah. Okay? Now you're going to have to go out of that, out of that school. Now you're going to have to go get a start a business. Uh-huh. Okay? So you're going to have to get clients. Uh-huh. You're going to have to advertise. You're going to have to open shop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to have to do word of mouth. You're going to have to do all of that. And the thing is, you'll have banks that will give you money because they're looking at the upside potential, but all that's doing is just adding more to that debt. Right. Adding more to that debt. And it's almost like it's a... Yeah, so I don't know. You know, is that a great yeah. way to go for some people? If yeah. you have a passion yeah. for that. You know, I'm, you know, we are in network marketing with, with health. Uh-huh. I, I started a business, yeah. and and it struggled the first few years, yeah. but I was making money. I didn't go into, yeah. I didn't go into quarter million yeah. dollar debt, and so after eight years, yeah. I'm making a six figure income yeah. in the yeah. wellness industry, yeah. and uh, a chiropractor's yeah. making zero income and got two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollar in debt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So which you know. Is, it's not necessarily. Yeah. Well, and it depends on how you start. You know, it's yeah. like it's like with uh, in my business being a graphic designer, it's really not a big ramp up as far as money. You got a computer, you're trained, you can do it. Right. You got still got to go out and find the work. You've got yeah. to bang on the doors. You that's talk the skills to that need to be taught more. Yeah. How that's, to network. Yes. How to yes. you know be an entrepreneur. How to get the work, but you also have to have. I, I think the, one of the things that's different now is. It, it, you know, it used to be you say, okay, I'm a designer and I've got a computer and this guy over here is a designer and he's a designer. And you get to know the community and say, okay, well, here's my strengths as opposed to their strengths. But now what you have, you've you got to understand what the offerings are on the Internet too and, right. and, and counter some of that stuff, you know, if you can. And, and I, in, within my industry, don't know how you do that. Well, you either you become know. a graphic designer or you either go get hired by somebody, right? Yeah. So that's one option. That's one option. The second option is you're going to go on your own. So yeah. then you have to learn all the entrepreneurial skills yeah. and people skills. You know, I always tell people, you know, where does money come from? Mm-hmm. Money comes from people. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You have to learn people skills. Yeah, to get Even it. if you're going and in, in getting hired, yeah. you better have good people yeah. skills. Oh, yeah. Okay? Well, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Or, or if you don't have computer skills, you better be damn good at what you do because you're going to sit in the corner and do the work all day yeah. and you're not going to have the experience of interacting with the client because if you don't have com- yeah. people skills, they're, your boss is not going to let you sit in front of somebody and talk. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. And, there's and they things. ain't teaching people skills. No, they don't. They don't. And, and that should be uh, as part of the mix. Did you have any of that in college? I People know. skills? Yeah. No. The, the only, the only, I tell you, the only class that we had that was that way, well, all the design classes were from this one instructor. And we got people skills because he insisted on us talking about what it is that we did and uh, defending it and saying this is why I'm doing this solution and this is why I think it's better. So that that was a it, it was a people skill because you had to get up in front of your peers yeah. and from him and justify it. So I think there was that, but as far but that's different than getting up yeah. in front of somebody. People skills who's are client. something as simple as yeah. smile. Well yeah. And yeah. you know uh, and some people, take an interest in other people. Right. And some in body language. Yeah, all sorts of stuff around people skills. It's just, yeah. Um, that's something yeah. that would be a value to teach. Yeah. Uh, and you're not getting that in classrooms. And I don't know if you're getting that in Lydia or anywhere else, you know. Uh, no. I guess sales would be an area where you would get that, you know. And people go, oh, sales, I'm not a salesperson. But you know what? Sales is, everybody's in sales. Yeah. Okay? If you're yes. a graphic designer, you're in yeah. sales. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If you're married, you're in sales. Yeah. Okay? So sales yeah. is, you know, I think, you know, add that to your, to your, um, experience to mm-hmm. learn some sales skills mm-hmm. because really what mm-hmm. you're learning there is people skills and yes there's bad sales where they're manipulating you and things like that but in well, general you, I think you have but you have people selling people skills and sales skills that are, have seminars yeah you're really good salesmen Tony they'll start Robert, their own right. yeah they'll start their own business and, and say this is what you need to do yeah. to be successful we, in we call it self help no. yeah it's yeah self-help. personal development yeah personal development right and it's and Yes, that's part of it. Part of it, I think, is people are just kind of born with it or not, or, or the way they're raised fosters it or it stamps it down. You know, mm-hmm. if, if I think if you're you're raised in a home where what you said and what you did was 
be rated or not valued or somehow. You're going to have poor people skills. Yes. down. Yeah, you're going to have poor people skills. Because you have poor people skill modeling. Yes, yes. They also... If you're in front of a computer all day and that's all you do is play video games all day and there's yeah. a whole generation that's yeah. really yeah. over reliant yeah. on technology and they yeah. have no people skills. Well, right? yeah. We call them nerds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well nerds need people skills. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think, you know, getting back to parent parenting skills and, and, and the way you raise your kids I think has a lot to do with it. I I know Nita had some uh when she was growing up she would go I think I remember she said one time she went to uh Neiman Marcus and bought something at Neiman's, which is, you know, an upscale place. Right. And her dad saw the box and he goes, well, who do you think you are to shop there? Well, you know, what kind of message does that give to a kid that's yeah. just developing and trying to learn about themselves and trying to branch out? Because you're not good enough. It's just a fucking store. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fluffy store. And, but it's but that still message there was store. you're not good enough to shop in Neiman's. That, yeah, that was the real message there. That had nothing to do with the store. It, had, it, had, it was pointed back. At her, right. and so you've got to overcome that, which she definitely has. Right. But Does she it, shop at Neiman often? Huh? No, no. no. I'm, it's not that. Just she's overcome the message in general, not right. so much where she shops. Right. Uh, uh, so, yeah, the people skills is a big deal. It's huge. I think a huge branch of education that uh, is not really mm-hmm. is not really taught in the formal Mm-mm. path. How do you teach that? People skills, yeah, because you people skills is more more than just giving a new an, an education about a product or procedure or no. process. It's 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 about changing an individual. It's about changing how you at, interact with other individuals. Uh, yeah, right. That's more yeah. has to do with the way changing how people were raised, though, isn't it? Well, I think if you've been poorly raised or had poor people skills oh. modeled to you, then you're going to need yeah. to learn that. And uh, and how do you learn that? Um, you know, I would the classic book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I'd mm-hmm. start there, mm-hmm. uh, and there are other materials around that. Yeah. And uh, and there's classes, and yeah. uh, probably there's meetup. I know there's. I found it interesting. There's meetups for introverts, really, which I thought was really cool. There's a business meetup for introverts in business. Wow. Uh, so it's out there now. If you're living in Casper, Wyoming, I yeah. don't know what. You know how much is available yeah. to you, uh, but if you're in a major city or near mm-hmm. a major city, you know you have the opportunity. Yeah, well, uh, I stumbled across a, an article and I flagged it to read later that I haven't. It's uh, it's a lady I can't remember her name, but she's number one or number two on TED Talks, and yeah. she's blonde and she talks about body language. Yeah, and how and how you promote a strong persona through the way you move. The way you stand, the way you Absolutely. present yourself, and uh, and she talks about and as far as I got an article they were talking about, and, and like in Harvard Business School, you've got a you've got a professor sitting there, you've got a room full of students, most of them men, still a bunch of women, but the men are, shoot their arms straight up to answer questions, eager arms straight up, and if the women do it, it's like kind of a, a bend at the elbow, half ass show of hand to try and do that or they kind of slink down in their chair and so that says a lot about the person and their self confidence level or their confidence in what they know or their confidence in this environment and it's not just a male female thing but she was making the point in this one article about that especially if there's females trying to break into a male dominated area and you know I gotta believe that the Harvard MBA program has been in the past for definitely that. I don't know what the mix is now, but uh, that's a that's a really good. That's something we ought to post. We'll post that. Yeah. Because that's that's and I want to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. Well, I think TED Talks, in a sense, um, is a university forming online as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can drill down and get all sorts of different areas now. Mm-hmm. There's so many different TED Talks in different yeah. cities and. And hear some really, you know, learn some really interesting things. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes the internet so fascinatingly better yeah. than television. Yeah. Um, I've always kind of, I could never believe there really wasn't a TED Talks on television does, previous to does TED Talks. T- does TED Talks uh, 
take an area and mine it with speakers, or do they just kind of scattered like this is kind of unique? You know, I don't know. I think unique, this is kind of unique, 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 and that's kind of cool. I think but I'm just wondering if they take a vein and mine it. That'd be good to check out. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they should. I mean, yeah. I can imagine you could do, you know, I'm sure they have a search box and you could search for different. Yeah. So you could search for body language. Body language, and then there would be. And a there'd thing. be a okay. couple, there may be yeah. a couple things yeah. there, but they should. It'd be nice if they mined it or laid it out, and I don't know yeah. if they do or not, but we'll put that on the Facebook page. Yeah. At uh, Carl and Mike on Facebook. Yes. Or go to carlandmike.net, which is our website. Yes. This is our time for a little plug here. <laughs> our little plug, yeah. So if you're on iTunes, go to carlandmike.net, and we'll have yeah. all the links uh, yeah. to co- topics that we've been talking about. Yeah. Uh, and um, or go to uh, for a discussion. Go to the Facebook page if you're on Facebook. Facebook is for you all, folks. It's, uh, con- the conversation to, continues. Yeah, and other conversations that you don't hear here that you may want to hear more of, and we'll, I'm sure we'll hear from y'all. And as we start to build a community here, we will we want to bring you into the conversation. So we'll take yeah stuff we're learning feedback, won't we? Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> and, if, and if you have a question right now, call uh, 1-800-555-1234. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't listen to him. No calling. Uh, the phones are ringing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that should wrap us up. Yeah. For today. What's well, not working? So check us out. Yeah. Facebook, Carl and Mike, at Carl and Mike on Twitter, or carlandmike.net on the website. I need to learn that stuff so I can do do that. So you can do the announcing here. Okay. Any final words? I like your voice better. Uh, No. That has been a trip, hearing your voices. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll go to that later. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Boink. Boink.